It's almost here. Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley Starting Business Building Brand Vlog. This one, big number 328. So this vlog is actually gonna be filmed in two parts. I actually filmed this vlog yesterday and uh, I rewatched it back and I sounded like the biggest little brat. Like I sounded like a spoiled little brat, honestly. And so I'm like, wait a second, I can't, I can't, even, I can't even let this go out. And so I'm waiting for something super exciting. My new car is gonna, my, Almost here, not the Subaru, not the Subaru, exactly. You're like, yo, Alpha, I thought you said you're getting it. Well, we did, we got the Subaru, and it's amazing. And the plan originally was, uh, God, do I need to back up and explain this? So I did a video talking about my new ride. If you missed that video, we're gonna link to it down below, where I talked about getting a new Subaru. And the whole idea is that my wife's car that we're trying, actually, I have to turn in my wife's car tomorrow to uh, the Range Rover dealer. And listen to this craziness, right? It was a three, four year lease and a three and a half year lease. Anyway, beside the point, I called him up. I'm like, okay, I want to return this, this car. Um, you know, I want to sell it back to you. And they're like, okay, your payoff is, I believe the payoff is like $45,000. And they're like, we're going to buy it from you for 57. I'm getting like $12,000 like positive equity back, which is awesome. I'm not complaining, but that is the crazy current state of affairs when it comes to cars. So anyway, the original plan was that while we we're waiting to order my wife's new car, we were gonna just buy something. I was gonna buy a car and drive it for a year. And then when that year was up, I was going to give it to my mom and my stepfather because they need a more like reliable not here yet, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. They need a, like, actually, let's go close to the front door so I'm ready. Um, they need a more reliable car. They don't really have one, and so I was like, all right, let me just do this, right? Well, then I started thinking about it. I'm like, you know, I, I'm not really like into cars, and so a new car for me is not like something I get like super excited about, except this one I'm, I'm pretty excited about. Anyway, so I'm like, why am I even driving this? Why don't I just give it to my mom and my stepdad now, let them enjoy the experience of a new car and just like geek out over it and get all excited, right? That means more to me than driving a Subaru for the next year. But now this brings me to a new question. What am I gonna do? I've got the BMW mom car, the X6, which you guys have all seen, which is sick and I absolutely Love this car. It's literally like my favorite car ever, other than the Toyota RAV4, which was awesome, and the other one, which is awesome. <laughs> anyway, um, love the car. And so what I'm gonna do is actually give my car to my wife, let her drive it, which I'm actually a little bit bummed out about. Not that I don't want her to drive my car, but I love that car, it's awesome. The things that are awesome about it are, well, it's, it's just awesome, it's an awesome car. And the thing that I've really come to enjoy about some of these newer cars is the technology because once you start not here yet <laughs> once you start like using the technology like you know the lane assist and the backup camera and the turn signals that beep when you're right yeah you get used to it so i'm a little bit spoiled because of that but that's not a re actually uh, let me it's here come on Oh yeah. Gentlemen, the 2007 Infiniti G35 is back in the Alpha M house. Let's take a look. What do you think? What do you think, gentlemen? Whoa. This is sweet. All right. So, little little bit of wear, no big deal, right? Still actually let me let me, let me fire this baby up. I have not How do I do it? Okay, there. <laughs> That's awesome. Mama, you want to ride? Gentlemen, you want to ride? All right, so this is awesome. <laughs> I'm super actually excited about this. Um, the G35, I, as you guys may have remembered, um, I gave it to my mom and my stepdad in order to basically give them a more reliable car. When I got my uh, M4, um, I still had this car. And so one of the things that allowed me to feel okay about getting a new car because I've got that whole like Italian guilt thing is knowing that they needed a car. And so I gave them this car and now it's about, I guess like six years older, five or six years older than it was. Um, but it actually has held up pretty good. And I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually good. I'm pumped <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, 
about it. So I'm going to drive this. I'm going to give my wife the BMW. I'm going to drive the old uh, old faithful G35 for the next foreseeable whoever. I have no idea when. Um, the car market right now is absolutely insane in terms of, actually I need I need some air conditioning hang on how do I turn it on uh one second all right that's it all right still nice see I'm sweating a little bit anyway um I'm gonna drive this for the next like year probably and um it's a it's an awesome car and I'm super excited about it and uh, my wife can have the new car the only thing I'm a little bit like oh, that kind of sucks about it is um, is the lack of technology right the fact that I don't have satellite radio kind of sucks the fact that I don't have like lane and maybe I do have like turn signals that I don't let me hold on do I nope <laughs> anyway I'm excited about it it's something cool and um, yeah anyway it allows my mom and her husband to have a really nice new car. The Subaru is amazing, and um, it's just a great car. And apparently, Consumer Reports just rated the Subaru as like the number one, like most satisfied, like customers. Like everybody loves the Subaru, <laughs> especially the ladies. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Now, I can actually get to your business questions. So anyway, gentlemen, if you dug this, um, I'm actually super pumped about this, and. Uh, I'm excited. I love this car. This car is awesome. Anyway, uh, it's good. Gentlemen, now your business question. Speaking of what we do here, I answer your business questions. I try to. I'm not the most qualified, but I've done a few things. I failed a bunch of times. And so we do have we. <laughs> I have a unique perspective. This vlog is all about you. The reason we started it was to help you avoid some of the pitfalls that we at T. Shanley were uh, basically falling into. Easy for me to say during the starting and building of the brand Tish Hanley. So anyway, if you've got a business question down below, start it with business question and ask away. Next week, try to get to some of them. But I'll also give you a tour of that sexy ass G35 if you dropped one. And let me know down in the comments, be like, yo, Alf, I wanna see a tour of the, the, <laughs> the ragged out G35, which I'm super excited about driving. All right, so here's the deal. There's a bunch of business questions. I'm gonna get to them, right? The first one comes from our friend Kevin Paredes. <laughs> Paredes, you guys like me trying to pronounce some of these names? It's impossible, because I suck. Oh, something else I just wanna mention real quick. The Kanye West sort of three-part series on Netflix. I just saw the first one tonight. I'm watching the second episode, because they're doing like a week. Unbelievable. I'm not the biggest like Kanye fan. I wasn't, now I'm like super, just so impressed. It is so impressive to watch what happened from somebody that believed in themselves and worked that hard. And the really crazy thing about this docu-series or documentary is that from back when he was like, like in Chicago, one of his friends, Cootie, had a video camera and he was documenting, he literally documented every, like every day of Kanye West's like life from a certain point, back when he was, you know, making beats like in his mom's, like it, it is unbelievable. And he continued to film Kanye throughout the entire like thing or career. And so it is unbelievable and so incredibly inspiring just to see somebody because, you know, you got to see Kanye before he, you know, oh, scam. <laughs> before he got like, blow, before he blew up, before he got signed to Rockefeller, like you see him in his studio. In his, in his new work, New Jersey's apartment, working on um, uh, 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 Jesus Walks, I can't say, like, you know that song, like, like Jesus Walks, is that the name of the song? Anyway, unbelievable, if you guys are into that. And that's something else that I found that I realized. I love music documentaries. I just love it. There's just something about it. But what I really am truly in love with are rap documentaries. Um, the Evolution of Hip Hop, another one, another series. They've had like four or five series, incredible. And I don't know what it is about sort of that genre or rap, but I identify so much with these guys, these, the, the struggles that they faced. And just like, everybody's like, just like, just hungry and working and striving. And I just think it's beautiful. Another documentary I love on the opposite spectrum, the Garth Brooks uh, documentary. Amazing. He cries more than me. I think I've even mentioned that before. Anyway, the Kanye video or episodes though, awesome. 
And uh, he's a disaster, like personally, but that doesn't matter. I want to hear the story. So the business question is from our friend Kevin Pardes. He says, hey, Aaron, our company is currently in need of digital marketing. Two options we thought of were hiring a marketing agency or one employee in-house to assist with us or assist us. Um, uh, where would you start off if you didn't have any digital marketing for one of our companies? So I believe, Kevin, do you own, do you have something to do with the airplane business that sells like parts and stuff like that? I believe you do, maybe, because we looked at this. You actually submitted Area 627. You guys are way far advanced for us, but congratulations on an incredible business that I, like, it's unbelievable what you guys are doing in terms of sales volume and, and everything. For you guys, I would not hire right now somebody in-house. I would definitely look for an agency that can help you with the digital marketing side of your business. You know, you could bring somebody in-house, but trying to find them is probably going to be probably more challenging than going to an agency. And right now, you know, you're bare bones, right? You don't have any real like internet or digital marketing like bandwidth or experience on your side yet. So I would probably go with an agency, but you just got to be careful with agencies because they are notorious for blowing a ton of smoke up your ass. And so maybe start there. And while you're doing that, maybe look for somebody. Um, but because you guys don't really know anything about digital marketing, it's going to be challenging for you to really vet somebody in terms of an employee, but it's possible. Um, but I'm just impressed at your business. Your business is awesome. And this is one of those things where you don't really think about, oh, you sell like airplane parts. What an incredible business that is, but it's apparently an incredible business and, and congratulations, but great question. <laughs> I love that song. Anyway, all right, so back to your business questions. Um, our next business question comes from our friend, Pure Water Sales, what's up, Joey? Says, over the last 18 months, I've had cost increase in products, average of 30%. On smaller ticket items, it doesn't hurt as bad, but most of our products, uh, that's like two to $300 per item. My average customer buys two items. On top of that, shipping average is 325 and I only charge 175 to cover some of it. At what point do you increase price versus losing an average of $600 per deal in straight profit? Um, on deal, it's not so bad, but over 10 to 15 a month, you feel it. Uh, anyway, so the big question is when do you, when do you increase costs? You know, I would say you should increase costs a while ago. You know, you don't necessarily need to absorb the, or, or, or upcharge like the entire cost, but maybe step it up, maybe 50%. You know, if your costs have gone up 30%, you know, increase your prices by 15%. You're still selling online, which means, you know, you don't have a lot of the expenses and costs that are baked into like a physical location. And because of the product that you're selling in terms of water purification systems, um, you still do need to be competitive, I would believe and imagine with price but it doesn't mean you should eat it all. You know, that's something that I have struggled with personally, right? Um, with Pete and Pedro, T. Shanley, we had the conversation. It's like, all right, our costs are going way up, you know, more than 30% in some situations and shipping has gone up. Like, what do we do? Do we keep eating it? Do we keep eating it? Or do we do what's hard and increase our price? Knowing that by increasing your price, you may lose customers. And what I have found just from both scenarios and companies, Increasing price, you know how much, you know, like it, it didn't affect it. The only thing that got affected was we make more money. We didn't lose a ton of customers. And honestly, it's just one of those things where you have to do it. You can't continue to endure the loss if you expect to continue to offer people amazing service. And so my opinion is it is time to increase the price, whether or not it's a straight 15% across the board or it's 10%. 5%, any amount of money is going to help put more money in your pocket. But great question and what a tough situation. It's something that most people these days are having to deal with and face. The next business question comes from our friend Jason Pine, which he actually tells me at the end of the video how to pronounce his last name because he knows I would have said pain. Anyway, he says, hi, Aaron. I last checked in about a year ago after graduating college. Since then, I've developed a dream of starting a business and plan to do so soon. 
I found that many people I know are hesitant for me to go down the path of starting a business because it seems risky. However, I think there's more upside to starting a business than working for somebody else. My question is, did you ever experience friends or family questioning your judgment on your entrepreneurial journey? And if so, how did you deal with it? Did I ever have people say, are you sure you should be making YouTube videos? The answer is yes. Yes, I have. You always will. And that's one of the things. You have to understand something. Most people, most people, I would say 99% of people are not built for entrepreneurship. And the reason is pretty simple. It's hard. It's really hard. Most people fear being uncomfortable and being an entrepreneur is anything but comfortable. Now, you may be thinking, oh, well, once you get or become successful, then it's super comfortable, right? Well, financially, you may be in a better position and be comfortable, but it never stops. The grind, as they say, it never stops. You've always got to be thinking ahead. You've always got to be looking behind you at who's coming after you because in my experience, you're either moving up or you're moving down. There's no like flatlining, right? And so most people are not built for entrepreneurship. It's not something that, that most people should be doing, honestly. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong about getting a great job, working there for five years, then looking for another job, getting a bump, because that's what happens. In the old days, people used to stay at a, or a job for like 30 years, right? Get their pension, retirement, and it's what they did, right? A lot of our grandfathers, a lot of our fathers, that's what they did. Entrepreneurship, it's not that way. There's no straight line. And so that you lose a lot of comfort. You lose a lot of stability. My wife is not an entrepreneur in any way, any way, shape, or form. She is a rock, right? She wants to go. She wants to work. She wants to leave it at work on Friday. Come home and enjoy your time. Most people prefer this. Entrepreneurship is tough. It's hard. There's no getting around that. Being successful, you're going to have failures. That's something else that a lot of people that think about, oh, it might be nice to start a business. Wouldn't that be cool? It'd be really awesome to work for myself. Yeah, theoretically, everybody would say that. But in order to get there, you've got to endure not only a stomach because it's uncomfortable and it sucks, sleepless nights, money, you may be broke. But chances are, and before you ever find out what you're good at or successful at, you're going to fail. And a lot of people are not comfortable failing. They run from that. And that's something that you've got to understand. Take it off the table. It's going to happen. You are going to fail at something. It's about limiting your risk. It's about identifying the failures or the things that aren't working quickly enough that it doesn't ruin you. But if you have entrepreneurship in your blood, in your DNA, and that is something that you want to do, you need to do everything you can in order to make it happen. Be smart. Be methodical. Don't waste money. Don't waste time. But don't allow people that have small mind or a small world in terms of their ability to see bigger opportunities and bigger things, don't allow them to influence you, right? Listen to them, but understand that when you surround yourself with other entrepreneurs, other people, find your tribe as they say, that's when a lot of things are going to get clear. It's when a lot of things are going to get better. At least it was for me. When you surround yourself with people that believe the same thing, that have the same goals, it's amazing how you lift each other up. This is something that I highly encourage you to look for, right? Unfortunately, you know, having friends that have small world views and, and um, aren't entrepreneurs, asking them for advice, it's not really going to do anything other than put doubt in your mind. Now, you need to find friends that will tell you the truth. If your idea sucks, they need to tell you. But in terms of them saying that you shouldn't try something because it's risky, maybe you should say to them, Nah, actually, don't say that. <laughs> anyway, amazing. Congratulations. Hopefully, you do actually go after and, and look for something that's going to make you happy and fulfilled. Because if you, if you are somebody that has entrepreneurship in your DNA, it is amazing. It's an exhilarating ride, but it's not easy. It's not a straight line. And you're going to have to endure pain and hardship to some degree. Hopefully, not as much as, 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 I mean, hopefully you limit it, right? Hopefully, hopefully everything is an amazing success right off the bat. Chances of that happening is slim and none, and slim just left the building. Gentlemen, speaking of leaving the building, I got to roll because I got a meeting that I got to get to. But if I didn't get your business question down below, start it with business question, ask it next week, more of them. I also will give you a tour that's super sexy. G35. Gentlemen, as always, we love you more than our double monk strap shoes. Have a great week. Be safe.